in a world and time when so much is changing, there is still so much of our culture that has to be documented and kept alive. Who are the bearers of these precious living cultures? How do they pass on a knowledge transmitted through the ages? What they represent has survived colonization, conflict, marginalization, and yet they persist. Sila ang sisidlan, the living vessels that store dayaw, our knowledge, our pride. The intangible treasures of our culture. We have seen how people have become vessels that not only contain but nurture and pass on important knowledge and techniques to future generations. While many of our Gamaba culture bearers have passed on, the knowledge and craftsmanship of those who are still living are recorded and documented. Hopefully, a new generation of Filipinos will find a genuine interest in the treasures of the mind and the spirit that they offer. But for others who are only beginning to develop an interest, the museum is the best place to start. Rightly, our museums are also vessels housing the material culture that will spark an interest in the real, intangible treasures. Every time we shoot an episode of Dayao, I find myself enthralled by the galleries of the National Museum. Walking through the galleries, I am constantly discovering objects of beauty, new ideas, and facts fresh insights into our culture. The story of our nation is told through pottery, through stone and wood, through textiles and metal, through paintings and sculpture. And best of all, admission is free. No wonder then that students and visitors are constantly roaming through the halls, discovering, as I do, a never-ending story of a people. No other museum has the history and the ambiance of the San Agustin Museum. Located in the cloisters, the newly renovated galleries are extensions of the living museum that is the greatest of Manila's churches. A new museum housing the Intramuros Administration's collection of ecclesiastical art is set to open soon, just a stone's throw away from the San Agustin. This jewel rises where the Church of San Ignacio once stood. This is the much-anticipated Museo de Intramuros. The project has three phases. So right now we're on the first phase of the project, which is the shell of the former San Ignacio Church. This structure will be the main gallery of the museum, which will house the, uh, the larger objects that we have, like the altar pieces, the carrozas. The second phase is the completion of the mission house. So we are now on the finishing works here on this building, and one of the uh, main features of this uh, project is the system which is right behind me. This is an original feature that was discovered during the archaeological excavation of the project. 
uh, and this is the we incorporated it in the design of the whole of the museum. And the third phase will be the completion or the finishing works for the for the reconstruction of the San Ignacio Church. The challenge for the museum is how we can make the exhibits uh, interactive so that the audience can be engaged while viewing the exhibition. It is heartening to know that many provincial governments have prioritized the building of museums that showcase the wealth of heritage and the pride of place for their own people, as well as for visitors. Some of these museums are located in ancestral homes, others in repurposed buildings. In Lawag, the Tawid Museum showcases the linkages between the Ilocanos and their Cordillera neighbors. A showcase of the personal collection of Governor Aimee Marcos, the Tawid Museum is divided into seven segments that focus on life in the village, from the homes to the fields and forests, from the ideals of male and female to concepts of wealth, warfare, sorcery and healing, and death and transition. The last gallery focuses on contemporary pieces by Filipino artists, all inspired by the culture of the Cordilleras. The Ayala Museum has always been a friend to Dayao, opening up their collection of pre-Hispanic gold for our earlier episodes. But there are still so many galleries that beckon the range of these exhibits, covering indigenous textiles, imported ceramics, and masterpieces of contemporary art. are actually 120 pieces of um, textiles from the various indigenous cultures of the Philippines. This collection was donated to us by no less than uh, one of our supporters, Miss Mercedes Zobel. These were actually from the various cultural groups from up north and down south of the Philippines. And the textiles are old, and so important because they talk of how great these subcultures from the Philippines are. There are a lot of old pieces in the collection, uh, like for instance, this one in front of us uh, from the Yakans, the Seputangan or the head cloth, head uh, wear. Actually, uh, we had a Yakan uh, visitor who was a weaver herself, and she said not even her great grand Lola can weave this particular piece. Both the warp and the weft are closed, meaning it was really done for this piece. And like how they produce textiles right now, you just cut it longitudinal for one piece. But this one really was sealed on both si all four sides. And they don't even know the technology nowadays because among the Yakans, there is this revi revival of weaving. That's why um, uh, Ayala Museum would like to feature this so that the people are aware of how textiles were made and that for these particular groups to have a revival and then for the general public, especially the museum goers, there will be a realization and appreciation. This collection of uh, Chinese trade ceramics as well as Southeast Asian trade ceramics came from uh, the Roberto T. Villanueva Foundation. The collection is an important uh, ceramic collection because it talks about uh, trade 
with China and the rest of Southeast Asia thousands of years ago. What the collection would like to talk about is how rich our ancestors were that all these things that were um, brought to the Philippines they simply acquired or some of them were actually not intended for the local market or Southeast Asian market. However, since they were loaded in ships, the ships met the typhoons in Philippine waters and they eventually sank uh, within our territories and then they were excavated and here they are on exhibit. The oldest piece in the collection is a globular jar, a white jar, which is uh, 9th century, meaning uh, it was part of the Tang Dynasty in China. They really talk about the Philippines being part of the crossroads because um, um, the Philippines is so important that uh, most of these maritime vessels pass through our um, areas of responsibility and uh, they were involved in the trade as early as then. In the Lopez Museum, a different experience, a singular strength and focus. The archives are renowned for their vastness, and the conservation laboratories for their expertise. It is no wonder that other museums link with the Lopez for their research and conservation needs. There are rare books, rare periodicals, rare maps, and then uh, manuscripts, Rizal letters and memorabilia, and Japanese propaganda. Plus, the manuscripts, the maps, and the rare books are being accessed to the researchers because they are already digitized. We have the kiosk, which can be used by the researchers. Puro digital copies na yung andoon. So yung may mga butas, uh, pinapatch po namin yon using yung leaf casting machine namin. Tinitingnan din namin, gagawa kami ng sarili namin yung papel para pang-patch dun. Kumbaga, imamatch namin yung kulay. Uh, hindi naman siya as parehong-pareho. Well, at least uh, medyo, medyo nakakahabol dun sa kulay. So kami ang gumagawa ng pang-patch namin. Medyo matagal din ho yung proseso, kagaya halimbawa ng mga malulutong na. So pag tinis po namin at pwede siyang water soluble, so pati yung mga chemicals na gagamitin namin. So meron kasi sometimes na uh, pag tinis mo, eh, lumulut uh, pumuputok yung mga papel. So kaya doon nagtetest kami ng mga chemicals na gagamitin. Pagka yung mga brittle na, so grabe na yung acid niya so at pwede naman siyang uh, soluble naman siya sa tubig so yun the time na nagwawash kami ng mga papel para matanggal yung acid niya para bumalik ng konti dun sa dati niyang condition ng libro we have to do scientific analysis in order to uh, diagnose the condition of artworks before proceeding to treatment. We deal with a lot of collections, both of the museum and uh, clients uh, who request for our uh, assistance regarding treatment of their collections. We deal with a variety of materials from, as you can see, we have maps, posters, paintings, and then we have watercolors, name it. <laughs> If you're dealing with millions worth of artworks, it's really a must that you must have a conservation lab in order to stabilize those paintings which need immediate attention or at least do first aid. 
in order to preserve them and, if necessary, restore them. Part of the museum's mission is really to be able to conserve the treasures that it has been entrusted with. And to be able to do that, you have to be able to, to preserve these treasures actively, hence the putting up of the conservation lab, which started out very, very quietly. And, uh, but today, we see it as a full-blown conservation lab that, that conducts its own research and uh, into, into the different methods for uh, best conserving the, these cultural artifacts. The museum's mission is the preservation and the stewardship of a collection that continues to speak to people who are willing to engage. Let the museum continue to see ourselves as a portal for continuous education, for engagement, and for us to be able to inspire succeeding and future generations to be able to be proud of our cultural and national identity. The Ben Cub Museum in Baguio is now a tourism draw. With a heady mix of contemporary art and even tribal art, lush scenery, good food, the museum is a place that merits not just one, but repeated visits. But another museum in Baguio offers a different, more academic, but equally enthralling experience. And it is set in the campus of the University of the Philippines, right in the middle of town. Two Baguio museums, two repositories of the rich Cordillera culture. The museum started uh, in 2009, which is now on, on its eighth year. The whole idea here is to uh, share my collection of uh, antiques, uh, particularly the tribal art and also my, my work of course and my uh, collection of, of contemporary art. We have nine uh, galleries and uh, we have two galleries that, that is changing, like Indigo Gallery changes uh, exhibition out every two months and then we have the print gallery. Aside from that, the rest are really you no know, permanent collection. This is another gallery of contemporary artists. We call it Gallery 2. And uh, mostly established painters. Next to it is the Maestro Gallery. It's a small collection of uh, paint paintings by the masters like Edades, Sanso, I have a little Sobel there, Legaspi, Arturo Luz, Ankyo Kok. These are a, a, a bulul wall, which are most of my large bulls. And there are some pairs and some single, single piece. Like this, this piece, uh, I got it in the 60s. And when I got married in London, I brought it with me. But uh, when I came back, I brought it back. The idea of Eco Trail came about when uh, 
I said, since we have the, the forest, it will be nice for the, our guests to be able to come and, and, and have a nice trip down the forest, inside the forest, and to appreciate the trees that we have. The whole idea is uh, to, sh to, to, to share the, uh, the activities of the museum and also concern for nature, which is in my museum is a combination. The Ben Cobb Museum bears a unique stamp of the national artist's personality and collecting interests. It also affords visitors a lifestyle experience. I want to make a legacy of this. And uh, again, uh, even if I'm gone, you know, it can still be appreciated. What I like is a lot of people are coming here and uh, more and more Filipinos are visiting museums and it's a good uh, sign. So I feel good when I see them happy and uh, very appreciative of what uh, I put up. The Museo Cordillera in the campus of UP Baguio has something different to offer. An exploration of the minds of the UP academic staff who take turns curating and putting together shows based on their interests and research. It is a unique approach to museum exhibitions, conceptualized by Dr. Annalyn Salvador Amores, who is best known for her landmark work on the Kalinga Batok, or tattoos. The Museo Cordillera will have three exhibitions. Uh, first is on the traditional tattooing in the Cordillera region. We have representative groups which we feature their tattoo practices inside the museum. So we have the Kalinga, Ibaloy, Ifugao, and Bontok region. In the museum, we also have featured the different tattoo instruments used in traditional tapping of ink on the skin, as well as the material culture uh, where we can see evidence of tattoo designs on their pottery and uh, bamboo instruments. The second exhibition at Museo Cordillera is about the production of anthropological knowledge through the work of our former professor and uh, Belgian missionary uh, Jules Derat. So in this exhibition, we feature artifacts that are used for acquiring uh, anthropological knowledge uh, during his field work in Kalinga. So we have photographs, uh, old tape recorders, uh, camera, even maps and kinship charts that were used by Jules de Rat, uh, during his fieldwork in Kalinga. The visible storage of the Museo Cordillera is the inside and outside of the museum. Uh, here we have a dense display of more than 1,000 objects and we showcase how the museums are actually working from studying the collections, uh, curating the collections before they go out for exhibition uh, inside, at the museum. So we have about more than 1,000 objects inside the visible storage and this is actually accessible to scholars who wanted to study the collection. And uh, it is also a meeting place for our descendants from, the, from Northern Luzon uh, who come and see the collections of their ancestors. We hope that Museo Cordillera will accentuate its niche in Cordillera studies uh, it will continue to be a platform for dialogues about issues of indigenous peoples. We also want to hold uh, discussion and access about Cordillera research. 
and it goes beyond Northern Luzon. So hopefully we can also encourage other local communities uh, to set up their own uh, museum in their communities and to have Museo Cordillera as an inspiration for this endeavor in preserving the cultures in Northern Luzon. I'm sure a lot of you are saying, wow, I didn't know there are so many interesting museums in the country. Well, the museums we have covered only represent a fraction of the repositories in Luzon. There are more museums waiting to be discovered in every province. We haven't even started on the museums in the Visayas and Mindanao, or the major museum project still in the works. So the effort to preserve educate and engage is there no doubt about it but will you make the effort to discover and to visit all these think of how enriching that would be for you your children for a generation of young filipinos just waiting to explore all these and what does it take just an effort one that you will never regret and I assure you, with each visit, with each museum, more engrossing encounters with Dayao, our knowledge, our pride.